द ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर इलेक्शन आर अपॉन अस द डांस ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी इज अबाउट टू बिगेन द पोल ब्यूगल हैज बीन साउंडेड इट इज गोइंग टू बी अ बैटल ऑफ द बॉइस्ट्रस इट इज अ फेस्टिवल ऑफ योर फ्रेंचाइज अ स्मॉर्गस बोर्ड ऑफ सोल्स विल बी प्रेजेंटेड बिफोर यू एंड अ प्लेटर ऑफ पोलिटिकल पोटेंशियल्स विल कम बिफोर यू यू मस्ट वोट आउट द वाइसेस Choose your captains. Indulge in some real politic. Sorry, I I was just channeling my inner Rajdeep Sir Desai there. Thought it might be a great intro. Okay, it is exciting times, my fellow nerds. The Narendra Modi government has been in power for ten years now, a whole decade, and the Bharatiya Janata Party is more powerful than ever before. We are going into an election where the results have already been declared by our Godi anchors. Back in December, the assembly results for five states were announced. Out of the five, BJP won in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, and Chhattisgarh. After that, in January, the BJP coined a new slogan: "Ab ki baar 400 par." The idea is the target is that they will win 400 seats the NDA collective would win 400 seats in 2024 elections since then uh, modi ji and his lot has been repeating this ab ki baar 400 par quite a lot he says it in a way that makes it sound like a done deal hone hi wala hai the seat count of 400 is being set for the NDA but they claim that BJP will itself win 370 seats all by itself you know 370 significant number article 370 genius 370 is a good 67 seat bump from the 2019 tally of 303 for the bjp in lok sabha the confidence they are exhibiting is so high that instead of asking who will win the 2024 elections godi media is asking by how many seats will the bjp win BJP winning is a done deal only and everyone knows this but uh, how much more will they win we must know it is a fun time to be alive clearly even the remote possibility of nda led by bjp losing in 2024 is a scoffed at you will be made fun of for even suggesting that there is a possibility that bjp might not get majority so how did we get here how did modi convince a giant amount of people that bjp winning 2024 general elections is almost inevitable i have some answers right here in this episode and by the end of it you will walk away with a nice little playbook on how to win elections so let's start the biggest and bestest episode ever Hello and welcome to episode 5 of Modi Review. I have been on a journey to document what Narendra Modi has done in the last 10 years. If this is the first episode in the series that you are watching, there are four others that you might want to check out. If I may say so, kafi bingeable content. Try it. You can watch those four after this one also or don't. I mean you do you. Don't let anyone tell you what to do. But now that 2024 general elections are upon us, I thought it would be a good time to de- delve deep into how narendra modi wins elections you see winning elections in a country of 1.4 billion people one seventh of humanity is not easy that is to put it very mildly in the last 10 years bjp has perfected the art of winning elections it has transformed itself into a machine that just intrinsically knows which levers to pull what chains to grind and what nuts to tighten so that they win the election it is time for us to unscrew the side panels and take a look inside this machine to figure out how it works okay let's do this nerd friends let's go As always let's start with the basics before we figure out how modi's bjp wins elections i need to tell you how to win elections in general 
it's a nerdy channel we get to the bottom of everything and we open up many rabbit holes so yeah what do you need to win elections oh there's a lot first you need to do a lot of work to establish yourself as a leader even before you fight the actual elections it's basic explainer time all right let's assume there is this town and it wants to build a bridge across the river if one or two people from the town go to the river and start building it themselves that would be rather inefficient i would say not saying that they can't do it but it would be faster if you involve other people in the building of the bridge part just my opinion the town folk will then go about looking for a person who would lead this project Let's say you are one of those people who is jumping up and down in the crowd and screaming me me pick me i will lead i will build the bridge me me leader uh okay wait so you want to be a leader now okay well done you ambitious little thing you have my full support now you just need to get the support of all the other people in the town all of them majority of them well you need to inspire confidence so how do you do that okay step 1 you need a plan the plan can be made by sitting with experts engineers builders contractors and the main people who will do different jobs according to their expertise they all need to work together and follow the plan your plan You lay down all the pieces in your plan, figure out a timeline, and then break it down into achievable milestones. You can call it a vision, a dream, or a PowerPoint presentation. Basic MBA stuff. But but just putting a plan on paper won't do it. You need to do a few other things. I mean, you might be a charismatic, good-looking, hot fit gym bro person who walks into a room and dazzles the crowd. But can you convince people to build a bridge? Can you? For that you need step 2. You need to communicate. Even if you have the best most well thought out plan in the world, it doesn't matter unless you are able to communicate it to the town in a way that they understand. Everyone in town will have their own thoughts on how to build the bridge, but you have to convince them that your way is the best way. So, you need to find common features in everybody else's plans and include them in your own. Then hammer the public with messaging around that one thing that everybody agrees on this is you finding a common thread common thought thread and inner desire or just plain insecurities in the town people and then convincing them that your plan is the best way to fulfill those desires more importantly you need to convince the public that their immediate selfish needs uh, don't matter what matters is the collective need of the town it is the bridge that matters so you can go to the market and tell the vendors how building a bridge would help them get across the river and get produce easily you can tell the school kids and their parents that they will get better schools which will be accessible after the bridge is built you can go and tell transport companies that their trucks will be used 10 times more just a second uh, did you notice something did, did you notice something uh, you are not exactly telling them how the bridge will be built i mean you are just telling them how building a bridge is a good idea yeah, and and how they would benefit from it because uh, let's face it everybody doesn't need to know where you will get the concrete from and who is the architect and who will put up the beams these are just minor details you can focus on the aspirations instead you have now set a dominating narrative the answer to every question relating to the bridge is uh, you So your aspirations are the answer to all the worries of the town. Amazing. Good job. Once you have set the narrative, we go to step 3. You need muscle. I mean quite literally, you can go to the gym and get some muscles, but more importantly, you need brawny good-looking gym bros to go around with you everywhere. I mean, think how glorious it would look if you always arrive with a crowd of supporters following you. People would be like, "Damn, Damn, this person has a lot of support. So popular. Are look at look at all the people following him. Yeah, yeah. The last person who came had like two people following him. Yeah, look at this one. Fifteen people. So popular. Mm, so so popular. Yeah. Mm. Ab ki baar? Mujhe lagta hai ab ki baar 
ब्रिज बनेगा यार Anyway, the muscle is basically your carder. You need to build a carder that follows the plan and helps you spread the narrative. You can just find passionate supporters who have willingly given your loyalty to them, you know, out of love. They are more convinced about the plan than you yourself are. Simple creatures only. You know, they get swept away in emotions that come with aspirations and dreams. You help them get in touch with those deep emotions and insecurities. You see? The narrative helps them get together and form a community around you it has to be around you yeah well done but then why leave this to chance you can always buy their loyalty right you can pay people and make them a part of your carder just one problem just one problem you need money for that which brings us to step 4 get the money you need to get man power machinery technology and all of the things to advance your plan but for all of that you need money how do you get the money well you can always ask your simple emotional supporters to donate for the cause if your narrative was powerful then they will throw money at your face because you are their savior after all but then there is another way the town government needs to spend taxpayer money on the bridge to build it right it is a collective resource you can go to a company that supplies cement and uh, tell them that uh, this project will need a lot of cement and you can supply it they'll get the money from the government and in return they can give you like 10% of it that is for making sure that they got the contract for the bridge you can do the same with steel transport architects and everyone else who would be involved in building the actual bridge This way you now have bought the loyalty of the people building the bridge as well because they are going to get paid and so will you in return and now you have the money use it to do social media ads put in newspaper front page advertisements about the plan and amplify the narrative also you can give chai samosa to your loyal followers and turn their undying love for you into absolute devotion it can be done so well done you but there is just another final thing that you need step 5 you need luck yes uh, you heard that right you might have the plan the narrative the carder and the money but if you don't have luck on your side you don't have jack shit luck is not what you think it is you know that's for noobs it's not like gambling in a casino or winning a lottery yeah that that's for normies luck in politics means being at the right place at the right time and you don't know when the right time would be so you wait and then when something happens you make sure you are at the right place and at the right time like for example you want to build this bridge and there is a tragic boat accident on the river while a few good towns people were crossing over a few people died and all very sad but hey that's the right place at the right time for you you use that incident time your campaign right and tell people why there needs to be a bridge there right now not 10 years from today not in year not in a few months you need it, this needs to happen right now otherwise more people are going to die you see you had nothing to do with the accident per se you didn't cause it but by identifying that this could be used to further your narrative and plan you have done half the job you were lucky that this accident happened right around the time you were thinking of running for the leadership race and that would be the final push you need to make public sentiment in your favor congratulations you are now a leader all you need to do now is step 6 fill that form and fight that leadership election if every thing aligns correctly and you work smart enough boom you are the official bridge builder of the town congratulations ab ki baar 400 par indeed okay if you're a diligent nerd person who just saw this i know you will want to remember all the steps above don't worry this entire video will take you through these six steps one after the other chapter time codes are below if you need to skip to a particular step but why did i do this basic explainer segment well it's simple to understand how our supreme leader narendra modi wins the war you need to understand what weapons he brings on to the battlefield political analysts on tv have this habit of doing a post mortem of the election results they tell you about what went into the elections 
after the results are out i'm actually trying to tell you all of that before the results just so you keep a watch on what is happening and identify it as we go into the elections it will all make sense then all right let's begin dissecting the election machine called the bhartiya janta party and their supreme leader adarniya shri sir supreme leader maximum authority shri shri adarniya narendra ji damodar das ji uh, modi ji the first of his uh, name Let's start with the plan. What you see on your screen is the BJP's 2014 manifesto. This is the plan that they used in 2014 to get a majority in the general elections. Let us dissect it. Oh hey, look, there is Atal Bihari Vajpayee, there is Advani and all sorts of faces other than Narendra Modi. As an aside, in the last 10 years, only a few of these people on this cover page are still around in active politics. I Y K Y K. Yeah, leave a comment below. Slogan alert: Election Manifesto 2014. Sab ka saath, sab ka vikas. When making a plan, this one line is ultra important. it should capture an emotional appeal which kind of communicates your entire plan in one slogan also it must be usable during rallies you know something like friends sabka vikas hona chahiye ki nahi chahiye yes i can't hear you yes so when i say sabka saath you will say sabka vikas sabka saath sabka vikas sabka saath sabka vikas see what i mean useful all right now we have some buzzwords it's an extension of the slogan only see there is democracy but what bjp will give you is a vibrant and participatory democracy oh we have youth but what bjp will give you is productive youth we have institutions but what bjp will give you is strong effective and futuristic institutions okay now we get to the meat of the plan table of contents starts with attend the imminent attend to the imminent attend the imminent This part captures all the insecurities and issues that people were talking about in 2014. These are problem statements: price rise, employment and entrepreneurship, corruption, black money, policy paralysis. Then we have strengthen the framework. This is the broad skeleton of the plan. It's like telling people, uh, look, we need a building here, but we already have a decent foundation. It has some cracks, but we will need to fill those first, and then we need to reform it a little bit before we start building on top of it. So yeah, reform the system. This section is about how institutions need to be reformed in order to deliver good governance, build shit and develop the country, filling the cracks in the foundation. That sort of a thing. Now we come to widen the platform. You see this is where the BJP is describing inclusive growth that sabka saath is what they are talking about this is also an attempt at putting voters into blocks labeling them and then appealing to them it has poor and downtrodden sc st obc weaker sections food security urban areas new middle class all of them bucketed Inclusivity for politicians is a way to sort their voter base and create specialized messaging for them. Now we come to leap forward. It is a continuation of the last section but a little more specific. This also ties in with issues that specific groups of people were talking about back in 2014 like non-performing assets, environment, Himalayas, handicrafts, taxation, so specific solutions for specific problems okay i'm leaving a link below to the 2014 manifesto you can go through it if you want but i now want you to see the next one the 2019 manifesto okay first up did you notice something the other people have gone poof vanish it is now all about one person narendra modi this time the slogan is plastered on the front page itself संकल्पित भारत सशक्त भारत ओके टेबल ऑफ कॉन्टेंट्स 
you'll notice that the plan has now changed 5 years ago it was all about structural reform and things that will follow this time it starts with nation first also you must know that 2019 elections were happening right after the pulwama attack so nation first was pretty much in the minds of the people back then implementing caa and article 370 also feature prominently in this plan clearly a precursor to what modi government intends to do in its second term starting from 2019 Then we have India as the world's third largest economy. You know, road map for a five trillion dollar economy. Another major talking point: the whole India as a mother of democracy, Vishwa Guru rhetoric, which is also so in our face all the time right now. That was there as well. Must point out that they were still mentioning make in India in 2019. Now it seems to have disappeared. I've done an entire video on why that disappeared which you can check out later. Under cultural heritage, Ram Mandir features right at the beginning. There is infrastructure, health and good governance among other things which are also on the priority list. It ends with 75 milestones for India at 75. You have to give it to Modi government. It gave a plan in 2019, and it made sure a lot of it was at least executed on paper, one way or another, in the following five years, which is from 2019 to 2024. So, abrogation of 370 didn't just come out of nowhere. Neither did the Ram Mandir. It was a part of the plan. As I record this, BJP hasn't released its 2024 manifesto, and honestly, there are very few hints about what it would contain. Okay, I have no clue. If you look at how Modi operates, he pulls out something out of the hat like a magician right before the elections, and that becomes the main talking point. So for now, we will have to wait and watch. As a wise man once asked Modi ji, "So much, who I am." कितना किया है और क्या बचा है द रीजन वाई आई टूक यू थ्रू दिस मैनिफेस्टोज इज प्रिटी एविडेंट इट इज देयर प्लान विच वॉज लेड आउट बिफोर दे केम आस्किंग फॉर वर्ड्स फ्रॉम ऑल ऑफ अस इफ यू जूम आउट एंड लुक एट वॉट ईच प्लान वॉज ट्राइंग टू टेल अस इट्स ऑब्वियस दैट मोदीज बीजेपी इज नॉट ओनली गुड एट मेकिंग प्लान बट इट इज ऑल्सो एन एक्सपर्ट एट पिवटिंग अवे फ्रॉम इट वेरी क्विकली You see this pattern throughout Narendra Modi's two decade long stint in power. First as the CM of Gujarat and then as prime minister. Every time Modi was at the center of it, the pivot that happened, Modi was there at the center. His personal image changed according to the plan and he likes to keep it fresh. Think about it. When he arrived on stage, it was in the backdrop of the Gujarat riots. In early 2000s he was playing up the Hindu Hriday Samrat narrative. Then towards the end of the decade he had pivoted to Vikas Purush or a development man and then started selling the Gujarat model. In 2014 he fought the elections as the man who would eradicate corruption and crony capitalism. And then in 2019 after Pulwama he pivoted again and played up nationalism. He became protector of the nation. Now in the past few months he has pivoted again playing up the fact that India is now being taken seriously by the world as a vishwa guru mother of democracy you know all of that is that the last pivot that modi ji will take before the 2024 election start i am not so sure i'll wait till the very last day before we go into polls you see if you want to win elections you need to learn from narendra modi and how he makes the plan his plan doesn't last beyond 5 years it doesn't last long enough for you to hold him accountable for the plan it keeps shifting keeping it fresh doesn't matter whether he fulfills the plan or not that's a minor detail but he does keep giving his supporters new shit to talk about heading into elections while his opponents continue obsessing over the promises he did not fulfill according to the last plan modi ji just smoothly ignores that and pivots to a new plan and of course he knows how to sell it as well before we get to how he does that i need you to be in the zone you know because things are about to get 
intense and very nerdy so it's time for हेलो 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 मेंटल हेल्थ ब्रेक फ्रेंड्स मेंटल हेल्थ ब्रेक इट्स डे टू ऑफ शूटिंग दिस लॉन्ग एस एपिसोड या मोस्ट अम्बिशियस एपिसोड एवर आई फील लाइक आई हैव बिटन ऑफ मोर देन आई कैन चू समाइम्स आई फील लाइक दैट्स माय लाइफ आवेल सो या थैंक यू फॉर बीइंग हियर थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग and uh, please do consider subscribing to this channel and supporting it because uh, bahut kaam karta hu yaar bahut kaam hota hai aaj ke life mein uh, i have realized that after uh, quitting my job and just starting this full time i have just lost it yeah in a good way in 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 a good way yeah so yeah Thank you so much for being here, and also you can do 1.5x. You know that, right? But yeah, okay. So it is time for chapter three. Chapter three. What is it? It is about the narrative. Building a narrative is all about effective last mile communication. You might have the best plan in the world, but if it doesn't reach your potential voters, then it's kind of pointless, no? The plan needs to burrow into your voters' brain and lodge itself in there like a tumor that doesn't go away. Then it spreads throughout your body till a point that you simply cannot ignore it. I mean, cancer. narrative make sure that the voter doesn't just imbibe the plan but they feel like they are a part of the plan too and narendra modi is great at this i've already covered how modi is seen as an effective orator and all of his brand attributes in part 1 of this series so i won't repeat the same points again you can check it out when it's done link and time codes uh, in the description in this chapter i wanted to touch upon two main things which are all about last mile communication one symbolism and the second the media okay first you need to understand that narendra modi is not just a man he is a symbol at this point of time him and his party make a lot of effort to turn modi into one if you listen to his speeches closely he mentions himself in third person okay don't understand wait let me show you normal people talk like this uh, i have filled up this excel sheet and submitted the report i think our project is on track yes me and my team will be able to meet the deadlines yes yes cheers narendra modi talks like this modi has fulfilled your promises jo bola wo kiya it was modi ki guarantee and it has been done 
Modi has made sure that the project is on track and it is the best project in the world. Everyone is talking about this project now. Are even the opposition is talking about the project that Modi is doing. Are Modi is just your humble servant and you are the ones who are meeting the deadlines actually. It's all because of your ashirwad that your son Modi is able to give you what you want. This referencing yourself in third person is uh, not normal. It is a sign of a narcissistic personality. In pop culture, the phenomenon is called doing the Jimmy. It comes from an episode of popular sitcom Seinfeld. There was this character in the show called Jimmy who loved to brag about his basketball skills. Basically, he was his biggest fan. So he kept saying, Oh yeah, Jimmy played pretty good after he did like his shots. In America, some people refer to Donald Trump as Jimmy in chief because he kept referring to himself in third person as well. He even did it in tweets, by the way, which is very weird. Trump slash Russia story was an excuse used by Democrats as justification for losing the election. Perhaps Trump just ran a great campaign? Referring to yourself in third person is a psychological trait called illaism. Psychologists say that this happens when a person's ego gets so big and inflated that it takes a life of its own. It becomes a character and while speaking the person is constantly praising that character which is basically them praising themselves but in third person these jimmies are so much in love with themselves that they need to address the object of their affection by name normal people like you and me do it too from time to time you know we do it in places like the gym when lifting weights or when we are pushing ourselves running on a track come on make that come on you can do it one more one more uh, my hands are dead come on make that it's nice to boost yourself once in a while. We've all done it at some point in our lives, but I doubt any of us has that as a personality trait. Maybe Meghnad should make it one. Meghnad is the best video essayist in India right now. Maybe even the world, you know? Meghnad's live streams are also amazeballs, just the best. Meghnad seems like this amazing online therapist when people are confused about their politics and about their life and feeling sad. Oh, okay. That felt dirty. That, that genuinely felt dirty. Why am I doing this? I really need to practice the art of narcissism more. Anyway, in politics, doing the Jimmy can lead to some very, very obvious results. When you separate your own ego and give it a life of its own, it can also become a commodity that you can sell. It's a brand. It's not you. It's a symbol, a brand. It's a carefully crafted symbol which actually goes really well with the plan. It becomes easier for Modi the person to transform and pivot his Modi the symbol, change its features when he does a planned reshuffle every five years. Think about all the things he has been called over the years. Vikash, Vikash, Vikas Purush, not Vikash. Vikas Purush, Hindu Riday Samrat, Vishwaguru. There is a reason why he spends an inordinate amount of time wearing different headgear when he is giving speeches across India. He is presenting a made-up character, not himself. Okay, sorry, but uh, side note. Have you noticed that Rahul Gandhi and Arvind Kejriwal also refer to themselves in third person from time to time? Just putting it out there. It's almost uh, like being a narcissist is a requirement for Indian politics. Which is very weird, but I guess it makes sense as well. Right, so once Modi created this third person Modi, it became easier to craft a narrative around it. It was possible to fuse the plan with the symbol and market it as a brand. To put it simply, Supreme Leader Narendra Modi is a protagonist in the novel that is being written by Supreme Author Narendra Modi. And it's a great story which people are buying into also. 
ओके सो वंस मोदी क्रिएटेड दिस सिंबल व्हाट डिड ही डू ही यूज द मीडिया द बीजेपी हैज मेड श्योर दैट सेटिंग द राइट नैरेटिव इज प्रायोरिटी नंबर वन फॉर देम यू माइट हैव हर्ड द टर्म हेडलाइन मैनेजमेंट बींग थ्रोन अराउंड कैजुअली दैट्स नैरेटिव सेटिंग Everything is an event for the BJP, and they make sure that its coverage is carefully managed. Minimal slip-ups. Godi Media anchors have been instructed by their editors and bosses to keep talking about this symbol. So they do it. They do it very often. Godi anchors have recently started calling him boss for a good reason. I mean, just look at these. headlines back in september 2022 arvind kejriwal had made a startling claim he said several owners of big channels their editors were showing me the filthy abuses he which is hiren joshi sends them will do this if you show kejriwal will do that if you show kejriwal there is no need to give air time to aam aadmi party you are misusing your channel The person he mentions is Hiren Joshi. He heads communication and information technology at the Prime Minister's office. It is alleged that there is a WhatsApp group of all top editors, anchors and owners which regularly gets messages from PMO office directing Godi channels on what news they should focus on and what the narrative around it should be as well. Basically, you know, like uh uh you know, toolkit something like that the overall result of this is that modi has taken over the brains of these godi anchors and turned them into an extension of his narrative machinery they sell the shit out of him on a day to day basis every chance they get godi media make sure that the modi symbol is constantly compared with other made up symbols and then portrayed as a victor in an imaginary war modi is the hero we don't deserve vanquishing the villains in society 24 into 7 to add to that bjp has also built a massive social media army of influencers who also make sure that the modi symbol is sold to the public infused with the plan don't forget the plan in march modi presided over the national creators award where trophies were given to chatukar government influencers even the bjp i think started to realize at some point that the audience is shifting to youtube etc nobody watches tv anymore so they were like ha huh, this would help him and his party sell the narrative and the plan better so creator awards abhi and new who sell brand modi on youtube on a regular basis got the new india champion award ranveer alabadia or beer biceps got the disruptor of the year award probably because he disrupted godi tv media by sucking up to ministers and bureaucrats of modi government in his podcast yes he, dis- he disrupted them best travel creator award was given to kamya jani who runs the channel curly tales wonder what she has been up to lately main hu india ki ab tak ki fastest train mein with a design speed of 180 kilometers an hour ye hai namo bharat oh of course why did i even ask look at the description of this video witness the future of rail travel in india namo bharat india's fastest train and look what vinay bhat says after seeing this wonderful video this train is so modern looking hope we will have this train in more cities in the future india ka development dekh ke bahut khush ho raha modi ji bahut acha kaam kiya hai see what i mean the power of narrative thank you abhi and new beer biceps and curly tails you are the hope for future india you are the new godi media congratulations basically you are an extension of narendra modi's personality congrats okay so tv anchors and influencers are all right when it comes to setting the mood but still not good enough for last mile communication you know what is the best way to sell a narrative face to face yes and for that you need carder you need India if you didn't notice is an extremely diverse country 
we have multiple languages cultures belief systems all mashed together into a smorgasbord of a nation that has a unity in diversity baked into it for a political leader and a party that wants to win national elections this is a problem it is a big challenge you can make a plan and control the overall narrative around it but what if the voter doesn't even speak your language what if their cultural identity is so different than that of supreme leader that they cannot relate to him it can happen not everyone in india has to agree with everything that the supreme leader does but it is in the interest of the supreme leader that you need to agree with him despite your cultural and identity differences so how does he ensure that the answer is muscle ground level karyakartas and cadres are the last mile narrative delivery system okay think of the narrative like a funnel the end point is your brain supreme leader pours his general message into the funnel by buckets a literal fire hose of information is poured in it on a daily basis then the top layer which is the mass media and influencer army processes it converts it into simpler language you know 30 second reels flashy explainer videos consumable propaganda podcasts debate shows where 12 people are shouting at each other all of this churn is happening on the top layer then it filters down to the middle layer which is social media they cut out clips make catchy text messages and mass post them across twitter facebook group instagram and of course the favorite favorite app of all whatsapp all of this from the middle layer goes to the bottom layer which is the muscle the cadre the cadre will take all of this content and further specialize it into consumable localized messages are you from uttarakhand then the cadre will take an issue like article 370 and only specifically focus on the hindu pride part of things however they would carefully not mention how land can now be bought in kashmir by outsiders because that is a really really contentious issues in mountain states like uttarakhand where they are also complaining that outsiders come in and buy land in their state are you from madhya pradesh then the welfare scheme messaging would be filtered down to appease specific groups like women farmers manrega workers old people the cadre will also physically show up in gathering places where groups of people have you know gotten together and extol the values of modi's uh, new india they will infiltrate whatsapp groups and argue with people all the while trying to sell brand modi the plan and the narrative but it is localized to the very last extent this is where the brain insertion happens the funnel ensures that there is a constant drip feed into your head not everything will seep in but some of it might you'll be pestered with the plan the man the narrative in hundreds of ways until the color of your brain changes this is a saffron brain once it starts getting that color it would also become the last layer of our filter it would be turned into the muscle the brain also has muscle memory if you start poking it the brain responds with literal slogans like hindu khatre mein hai ab ki baar 400 par 5 trillion dollar economy kuch bhi keh le aayega to modi hi vishwa guru it's it's like a reflex action you see all of these slogans that came from the very top they filtered down into a bhakt brain and lodged itself into the muscle memory part of things to further reinforce this muscle memory there is a system of validation that has been created as well uh sorry if you got offended because i used thalaiva uh as as a saffron brain please it was an illustrative example much respect for thalaiva sir Anyway, they have created a validation system as well. The cadre, these muscle men, are not alone. They always, always come in a mob, faceless, personalityless. They will be the ones putting Modi ka parivar and Mission Modi 2024 in their social media bios. Their personal identities have been hijacked and turned into bhakt form. If Modi is the mob boss, this is his mob. 
and they are like extras in a movie you see they'll come in by the hundreds start shooting slogan bullets everywhere wildly even if a few of them die in the next fight the mob boss will just send more and more and more they just keep coming please can you stop they still keep coming please can you stop calling me anti national please hundreds of them come at you okay please stop i i do love my country please can you stop with this nonsense yeah and they just keep coming it's relentless oh okay breathe you know what you need more of yeah just take this all right Now let's talk about money. The favorite thing for everyone across the world, isn't it? Business sir included, BJP included, me also included, you also included. Everyone's favorite thing. I mean that feeling you get when that one message comes in saying your account has been credited with 15 lakh rupees. I hi. Bidi. Chef's kiss. Abey Soros mera check clear karna sale. मतलब मैं कितना कर रहा हूँ सोरस तू ओके बट बिफोर आई टॉक अबाउट दिस आई जस्ट हैव टू चेक यू डोंट लिव अंडर अ रॉक राइट आई मीन इफ यू डू इट्स ऑल राइट इट्स ऑल राइट आई विल क्लिक क्विकली गेट यू अप टू स्पीड विथ वॉट हैज बीन हैपनिंग लेटली इफ यू ऑलरेडी नो अबाउट द इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड स्कैम एंड पोलिटिकल फंडिंग बेसिक्स यू कैन स्किप दिस पार्ट बट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो अबाउट फैंटेस्टिक पैसा एंड वेयर टू फाइंड इट देन स्टे Okay, let's go. Here's the thing. To operate a political party, you need money. You need to hire people who will make the plan before you present it. Do surveys, talk to people, get a sense of what they need and then make the plan. You need money to spread the narrative. advertising keeping influencers in five star hotels before they do fluffoganda interviews for your party folks throwing parties to do networking with godi folks you know make and disseminate toolkits for your online it cell just that they can spread it paying them 2 rupees per tweet when they do spread it stuff like that you also need money to maintain the muscle some of the carder might do party work all by themselves out of loyalty but then to thank them you at least need to buy some chai samosa sometimes give them money for transport and also help put up giant pandals where all your loyal supporters can organically come in and uh, listen to you speak for hours for election campaigns elections are very expensive estimates indicate that 55000 crore was spent on 2019 elections half of which was spent by the bjp between 1998 and 2019 election expenditure has shot up six times from 9000 crore to 55000 crore oh yeah and out of that about 15000 crore or 25% was just distributed to voters illegally of course but distribution oh and this was 5 years ago going by the trends it wouldn't be surprising if close to 70000 crore or something is spent in the 2024 elections that's the entire budget of our national rural employment guarantee scheme for an year given that this much money is required where do parties get it from simple answer is donations some people voluntarily donate to the party out of their love for it and some people see an opportunity to fund parties that will form the government so that they can extract favors later when the party comes to power and forms the government corporate donations companies have been donating to political parties for years in india For instance there is this fascinating case where both the BJP and Congress took donations from a foreign company called Vedanta way back in 2010 that was illegal under the foreign contribution regulation act political parties were not allowed to take money from foreign sources to prevent interference in our democracy so both BJP and Congress got caught and the Delhi High Court hauled them up in 2014 This was literally days before the general elections and the court found both parties guilty 
and said that action should be taken against them. The matter was taken to the Supreme Court. Then in 2016, the BJP changed the law, the FCRA law, retrospectively. Meaning that they went back in time to 1976 and said that the foreign donations to political parties, when it is given by Indian subsidiaries, is totally allowed. Which means both BJP and INC were let off the hook. See, this is from 2018. The Modi government is using Budget 2018 once again to give BJP and Congress a get-out-of-jail card for having illegally accepted funding from foreign companies. The party will get a free pass for violations of the law going back 40 years. So the law was just changed like that. Anyway, uh, both of them then went to the Supreme Court and said, Haha, law has been changed, now you can't act against me. When this happened, maybe the Godi government Godi government. The Modi government thought, Guys, uh, this is very inconvenient, okay? Uh, we need money to fight elections and need corporates to shower us with money. Hmm? Because elections led there. But then, this pesky janta and the annoying court will have a problem with it. They'll ask questions. So, we need to do something to hmm, hide it. Hide it all. So, our ex-finance minister, genius Arun Jaitley, he birthed the electoral bond scam. It was a genius scam, I would say. He introduced a law which created a special currency for political parties. Parties could take donations from whoever wanted to give it, but the transaction would be completely hidden from the public. But it wouldn't be hidden from the SBI, which, which issues the currency, and the government in power because they run the SBI. And that opened a floodgate of donations. About 50% of the total donations that came through electoral bonds, which is about 6,000 crore, we have that data available now, that went to the BJP. And nobody knew who was giving it and what was being given in return. As a result, there were shady companies like Future Gaming with no real business who funneled money into political party tijoris. The biggest one here was DMK. Then there was Vedanta. Good old Vedanta. It continued to hedge its bets and donate to both BJP and Congress. It gave BJP 226 crore and Congress 110 crore. Both parties got it. Then there were companies like Airtel which reported an average loss of 907.16 crore between the financial year 2020 and 2021. And even after making the losses, they donated 197 crore to political parties. 197 crore went to BJP, 50 lakh to National Conference and 10 lakh to Rashtriya Janta Dal. It was basically a free-for-all. Until last month, when the Supreme Court ordered SBI to reveal all this donation data and make it public, it was a free-for-all. So, for eight long years, these transactions and what favors were exchanged in return was totally hidden. And between those years, parties continued to spend crazy money on elections. The ruling BJP got more money disproportionately because they are in power in the center. Similarly, TMC also got a bunch of money, so did Congress and DMK. Essentially, electoral bonds were a medium through which multiple smaller scams were hidden, making it the biggest bop of all scams in the history of independent India. And that, my friends, is how parties can get fantastic paisa. And now you know where to find it as well. Uh, it's in the electoral bonds database. In India right now, it has become obvious that if you are a rich party, the chances of you winning in an election actually go up. I'm not saying you win by default because of money. I mean, you need a plan, narrative, muscle and all of that. But money is what acts as a fuel for all of it. If your party manages to outspend the others in advertising, you will simply get more visibility with the voters than other parties. If you hire better agencies, advertising agencies, international ones to basically do your advertising campaign and selling narrative, then you definitely have an unfair advantage. Or you can just go super simple and just distribute the money. Either you can give cold hard cash to voters before they go to vote, 
इलीगली ऑफकोर्स और यू कैन जस्ट फीड दैम सम मटन राइस नॉट किडिंग इट्स अ बिग इंसेंटिव We live in a country where 81 crore people depend on the government for food ration. This is a country where the bottom 10% of the population earn less than 140 rupees a day. So chicken bhat sounds like the best idea in exchange for your vote when you are fucking hungry. And we have a lot of people who are hungry all the time you and your party will get funded based on how much favors you give in return if you announce a bunch of infrastructure projects and then figure out a way to hand over contracts to specific favorite crony capitalists then your donations are sorted the more spread you have over the country electorally and cadre wise the chances of you getting funded by a bigger party go up for example if you are fighting elections from a constituency that has a lot of mining then the company that wants to mine the shit out of the ground would love to ally with you provided you have chances of winning if you don't believe me listen to modi ji he explains it also parties ko paise ki to zarurat hoti hai election ladne ke liye wo kahan se aayega modi ji dekhiye aapko daan mangna hindustan mein bura nahi mana gaya hai daan mangna bura nahi mana gaya lekin आप ये कहो कि इस ब्रिज के अंदर 10 परसेंट तुम ज्यादा टेंडर भरो ब्रिज कैसा ही बना दो मुझे इतना दे देना मैं समझता हूं वो देश के लिए बहुत बड़ा नुकसान करता है वो बहुत बड़ा नुकसान करता है और इसलिए ये गिव एंड टेक वाला जो चला है ना उसको कैसे भी करके रोकना होगा वरना आप पब्लिक में जाइए अब जैसे मेरे यहाँ पिछले बार चुनाव था तो हमने बिल्कुल पंद्रह दिन अभियान चलाया गाँव गाँव जाने का फंड कलेक्शन का और सारे अखबारों ने मेरी बेजी थी कि सबने लगा मोदी फिरौती कर रहा है मोदी डिगना कर रहा है कार्यकर्ताओं को गाँव गाँव भेजा पैसे इकट्ठे कर रहा है दुनिया भर की गालियां पड़ी लेकिन मैंने कहा मैं बड़े बड़े लोगों से पैसों ले ले जाने वाला नहीं हूं छोटे छोटे उसे मुझे फायदा हुआ नोट भी मिला वोट भी मिला चुनाव भी जीत गया एज अ लीडर हु इज स्टैंडिंग फॉर इलेक्शंस यू नीड टू एग्ज्यूड कॉन्फिडेंस दैट यू आर गोइंग टू विन अब की बार 400 पार इज नॉट जस्ट अ मैसेज फॉर द वोटर्स इट इज अ मैसेज टू द पोटेंशियल डोनर्स एज वेल मोदी जी इज टेलिंग द डोनर्स ऑफ हिज पार्टी अरे यू गाइस डोंट वरी वी आर विनिंग अगेन ऑल दिस डेटा स्कैम इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड स्कैम एंड ऑल डजेंट मैटर बिकॉज नथिंग विल हैपन टू यू मोदी की गारंटी unless i want something to happen to you whoppa fitish fitish oh wait yes i must tell you about this whip also a little bit now this is also a weird one but hey supreme leader shri sir adarniya modi ji maximum authority is a visionary he adds more components to the usual list of things when it comes to winning elections They're going against the constitution but yeah genius but before i expound further on modi ji's genius i think uh, you need this so take this The producer wanted to see how the shoot was going, so the producer is here. Producer, producer, you don't have enough light. Alu, ah, say hello to producer Alu. Yes, uh, this thing, 
बेस्ट थिंग टू हैव वेन यू वॉन्ट अ मेंटल हेल्थ ब्रेक राइट अपडेट लुक दिस लुक दिस लुक क्या कर रहा है तू क्या कर रहा है शूट देखना है शूट देखना है शूट देखना है ठीक है यू वॉच द शूट वेल द कुकर का सिटी इज गोइंग ऑन इन द बैकग्राउंड वी आर गोइंग टू शूट अ न्यू चैप्टर आलू इट इज अ बोनस चैप्टर इट इज अ बोनस चैप्टर अबाउट द विप लाइक वापा वापा Yes, 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 yes. Are you interested in this? Are you interested in this? Yes, she is interested in this. अब मुझे शूट करने दे. People are waiting. Yes, yes. People are waiting. I know. I'll come. Okay, okay. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. So yeah, do support uh, Alu. Alu is the producer. Do support her. and uh, thank you so much for uh, your support with this channel uh, thank you so much for live for attending the live streams which i do every monday wednesday and friday uh, at 9 pm if you want you can come in we talk about the news we talk about uh, what is happening in politics and i try to not give you stress at this point the usp of my channel is uh, this channel does not give me stress The sounds outside are giving me stress right now because shoot कैसे करेंगे But क्या कर सकते हैं गरीब यूट्यूबर Okay, let's go bonus chapter. This is a bonus chapter because Supreme Leader Modi is a visionary. In a normal situation, I think you can win elections by making a plan, spreading a narrative, using muscle, and fueling it all with money. But Modi ji was like, "That is not enough. I want a whip. I want to whip the shit out of the opposition, dissenters, and anyone else who does not agree with me and is against me and my government. Whip them." So. In 2019 a change in the law was made there is this law called the prevention of money laundering act or pmla as the title suggests it is to prevent shady people from turning black money into white you know laundering this law was changed to give crazy powers to the enforcement directorate this is the agency which is tasked with finding out shady people who do money laundering their job is to track companies and individuals for suspicious financial activity find the money figure out if this money was received through illegal means then prove that it was laundered and punish people for doing it under the pmla act but the amendment to this law changed everything now whenever the ed arrest someone under the suspicion of money laundering then it is up to the person that is arrested to prove that they are not guilty usually in case of simple crimes like you know murder the law operates under the understanding that the accused is innocent until proven guilty but for money laundering crimes the pmla act says that the accused is guilty until proven innocent by the accused themselves so ed can arrest a person without informing the accused why they are being arrested zero due process just whims and fancies of the ed the conditions for bail under this act were tuned up to full volume basically the ed can keep you in jail for as long as they want until they build the case so you are supposed to prove you are not guilty but you are in jail so you could you can do jack to prove that you are not guilty but the ed on the other hand is using all of its machinery to build a case against you totally fair it seems the ed can summon a person without actually telling them whether they are being called as a witness or an accused i i mean at this point you should be going what the actual because this is what the actual
A similar change in law was made in 2017 to give superpowers to the income tax department as well. They can now conduct raids with abandon whenever they have a reason to believe that you have been doing shady things. Oh, and there is already the caged parrot CBI. Previous government used it to harass the opposition as well. So did this one. But one agency is not enough for supreme leader. He likes to do bigger things. So he added two more whips. ED, IT, Extortion Directorate, Intimidation Tax. CBI ka kya hoga? Central Bureau of In- Intimidation? Investigation? Nahi. Intimidation. To Intimidation Tax. I need to come up with a better one. Leave a comment below if you can come up with a better thing for IT. So, the ED, IT, and CBI, both ED and IT with more teeth were unleashed on the opposition by Modi. 95% of political leaders who have been investigated by the ED and CBI since BJP came to power have been from the opposition. Modi uses these three agencies like a whip. He whips his opponents into either changing parties and joining the BJP or keeping them in jail, disabling them politically. Oh yeah, and the supreme leader also uses these agencies to run an extortion racket. The electoral bonds data data reveals that donations given to BJP strangely coincided with raids by either of these VIP agencies. One recent case which you should have heard about is the arrest of sitting Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal. The ED arrested him, now refuses to let him go, saying that his party took bribes to change the liquor excise policy in Delhi. The ED is building this case on the statement of a witness who used to be an accused named Sarath Reddy. Turns out his company also coincidentally donated some 60 crore to Modi's BJP twice. And when it came to bail, the extortion directorate did not oppose his bail under this very PMLA Act. After Reddy turned approver and gave a statement against Kejriwal, ED was like, ha, chale jao ab. ho gaya. We got what you want. We got what we want. Sorry, not what you want. You already gave money. But anyway, you get it. Essentially, mota mota, we are in a situation where these three agencies are weapons that the BJP wields against their opponents and dissenters. They don't give a shit about level playing field to ensure equal application of law or even getting rid of corruption itself. All they care about is winning elections. And if they can help it, they wouldn't want it to be a free and fair election. Because fun fact, when you are a bully, you don't like fighting on a fair ground. And after all of this, there is one final thing that Modiji needed to win elections. And that one can be a bit elusive. You must be wondering at this point, why is luck a part of this list of reasons on how Modi wins elections? It is an elusive thing. You either have it or you don't. That is precisely why I wanted to include it in this list. When you are aiming to get elected, you can work to make a plan, build a narrative, gather muscle, accumulate money, and also whip your opponents into shape. But none of that works if you don't have luck on your side. An aspiring leader needs to be at the right place at the right time. Okay, go back into 2014 again. Think of the political environment we were in. Massive agitations against corruption, extreme anger against UPA government. Everybody was pissed off. Modi happened to be in the right place at the right time. When the entire country was waiting for someone to clean up the UPA mess, they were looking for an alternative. Modi happened to be there. That was luck. Think about 2019. People were kind of on the fence about Modi's second term. Demonetization was still fresh in their minds. GST implementation had angered people. And the economic indicators had been dipping since 2017 for two years. Then Pulwama happened. 40 brave soldiers lost their lives in a terrorist incident. The governor of that time, Satyapal Malik, gave multiple interviews claiming that Pulwama happened because of the carelessness of our own government. It was almost as if they let it happen, allegedly. Honestly, it doesn't matter anymore or it just doesn't seem like it matters anymore because Modi used it and he used it well. He was 
lucky when the incident happened which helped him build a narrative around nationalism and get another bigger majority in parliament he even went so far to ask for votes on the dead bodies of those soldiers it's disgusting but he did it and modi has luck not just in elections by the way he has luck later also see this example This is a chart about crude oil Indian basket prices from 2014 till 2019. When Modi came to power in 2014, the crude oil was at $109. In just a year, it dropped to 61, then it further dropped to 46, which means the government had to spend less than the UPA to import oil. which means we enjoyed a good 3 years of windfall gain as a country but the government was looking great as well during the modi rule the price of oil imported by india fell by 32% yet central taxes were hiked by 129% this is what luck looks like people were expecting ha prices to badhenge nobody looked to see that the crude oil prices are falling and how much windfall was being made by the modi government i mean modi doesn't control the crude oil prices but he happened to come to power when the conditions were just aligning in his favor you see a good leader knows when it is a right time to strike like a snake they wait for the right moment they they're all coiled up they make sure that they are positioned at a striking distance and at the right place and when the right time comes they strike so it is vital for a leader to also identify when the time is right that's a rare skill which politicians master with experience they build a strike instinct and sometimes it pays off once you come to power then the new rule takes effect the house always wins you must have heard about this term in a casino the games are designed in a way that even if some players win a large amount of money gambling the casino still bags the profits because other players are losing a lot of money as a player you don't have control over how the games are designed and the house will always design them in a way that the probability of you winning is low so you keep pumping money into the slot machine hoping that you'd hit the jackpot but when you run the casino you get to design the game and you can make sure that the probability of your people winning is super high but everyone else loses more in 2014 modi had managed to do all the things in our list but also had luck on his side After 2014 for a decade Modi has created an environment where luck would not be on anybody else's side so that he continues to sit on his throne he uses whips against the opponents to crush their leadership and finances he uses electoral bonds to gather money he dominated over the rss and expanded the cadre base he could advertise more than any other party he also managed to take over and create a godi media so that the narrative stays in control it almost seems like he doesn't need luck anymore because he has all the other things pat down in place and the bjp is working like a well oiled election machine oh yeah and he is also cut any emerging leadership from his own party down to size remember what i said 2014 manifesto all the leaders 2019 manifesto only modi ji where are the others comment modi has a way to eliminate threats to his own leadership one way or another making sure that there is no challenger but 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 that's the thing with luck that's the thing my friends you never know how things would turn maybe some other leader would be at the right place at the right time and dethrone modi i would say that that is an inevitability in a country of 1.4 billion people the probability of being lucky is very low but hey learn from modi he waited for more than 30 years to be at the right place at the right time well so can you okay so that was a long episode but it was a necessary one i wanted you to understand the modi playbook so that you can see the patterns 2024 elections are upon us and you will see many events unfolding which you which might make no sense to you also 
throw you into despair. But now you can just flip through this playbook and make sense of things. It will help. You can also go ahead and judge other parties on these parameters. You will see similarities in Mamta Banerjee's win in West Bengal or Stalin winning in Tamil Nadu. If you want to spot new challengers, you can use this playbook to do that as well. Will Prashant Kishore's Jan Suraj amount to anything? Will Kejriwal's Amadmi party further expand and emerge as a challenger? Will Congress be able to revive itself? Well, judge them based on this playbook and you'll know. And if you are someone with a political ambition, there is nothing wrong with that. This is your guide. It is the most brutal guide that you will find on the internet. No politician is going to give you these lessons. These are all lessons that I have learned after working with politicians for more than a decade now. It is important for you to understand that aiming for the highest position of power in the country requires a lot of strategy, planning and efficient execution. It's really difficult to end up on the throne, but it's not impossible. Maybe, just maybe, you are someone who can do it even better. Go forth, my nerdy friends. My potential supreme leader. My angels of hyper-intelligence. We really, really need a nerdy person on the throne on some day. I just feel like we do. Some, some nerd. I want to see some nerd again on the top position. Thanks. I know what you're thinking. You must be thinking, Ye admi pagal ho gaya hai. For the last hour, he was talking about how Modi wins elections and now he's asking me to win elections. What is this nonsense? What is this ridiculous? Well, what can I say? I believe in you. Yeah, take it and go. My belief, take it and go. So, before I end, I wanted to talk about one more thing. Your mental health. I gave you already two mental health breaks, but I do need to talk about your mental health right now. So you might be someone who is looking at all the depressing political shit unfolding around you. And you might be thinking like you're dead inside. 2024 elections might look like a doomsday scenario for our democracy. And I don't want to underplay that. It is bad. It is very bad and it is getting worse. We are moving towards autocracy and there is no denying that. There are no free and fair elections anymore. But for the sake of your mental health, I want you to expand your horizons a little bit. YouTube data tells me that most of my audience on this channel is between the ages of 18 to 35. If you are one of those people, then don't lose hope. The 60 year old uncles who are currently in power and have created this toxic, shitty environment will get old and they will die. And then a time will come when we become the powerful uncles and aunties who are sitting there in positions of power. We just collectively need to wait like a coiled snake, be at the right place and look for a time to strike. I look forward to those glorious days. My dear nerd friends, our time will come. Our time will come. Thanks for watching.